and let's get going. Let's get going. So we're gonna take some breaths in and out through the nose. And I want you to think expansion on the inhale and contraction on the exhale. So inhale, we expand, we get big, and exhale, we kind of crunch in. Let's do that instead. Let's give a hug. Inhale, open, that's the expansion. Exhale, curl in. So the belly goes down and inward. Open it up, open it up wide, and exhale, give an exhale out through your nose. And come back to neutral, circle around on the hips. Feel your sitting bones. You'll feel the shifting from right to back to left and forward and then reverse it. And notice when the belly engages. There goes my creaking chair. And come back to center. And now let's rock forward and back. And I specifically want you to feel your the back of your sitting bones and the front of your sitting bones. As we lean back, we're feeling the back of the sitting bones. As we lean forward, we're feeling the front. Why is this important? Well, several reasons. First of all, it helps with our balance. It helps to engage our core and it helps to release. So what I mean by that is rock forward and back and then you're gonna find that center point where you feel like your posture is upright. You are working in this point. This is our mountain pose. There's a little bit of tightening of the belly. And let's just be in our mountain pose. Turn your palms forward, shoulder blades on the back. Now, if we rock forward, the tendency is the belly kind of hangs. And it, it's, it's, we're, we're towards the front of the sitting bones. Almost like we're ungrounded, the sitting bones could come off the chair. Then we lean back, we're on the back of the sitting bones and guess what engages, the belly engages. So let's feel that forward and back. Forward, belly's kind of hanging. We go backwards, belly's pulling in. Go forward and back, let's swing the arms. Back and forward, take them back and forward. So as you go forward, feel a lengthening through the spine. As you go back, feel a lifting of the heart. Forward, arms swing forward, exhale, they swing back. How about one arm forward, one arm back? How does that feel? Let's switch it up. So we're staying forward here and switch it up. And switch it up and come back to center. We're, we're centered on the sitting bones. Inhale, take your right arm up overhead. Yes, reach high. Get long on both sides of your body. Excellent. Take your left arm up. Reach up high with both arms. Exhale, lower your right arm down. Keep the left one up. Reach high. Notice how it's easier to keep this side long because the arm is up. Relax the shoulder. Inhale, take both arms up. Yes, interlace fingers, but point your fingers are up. One of my students coined this as Charlie's Angels Mudra. Get it? Like that? Uh-huh. All right, take a side bend towards your right. Breathe in. Breathe out. Rise back up. Exhale towards the left. Ooh, nice stretch. Breathe in. Breathe out, inhale, rise up. Exhale, take your arms forward. Inhale, lift them. Exhale, forward. Let's do our Charlie's Angels in a twist towards the right and towards the left. Notice how you can't go all the way with this mudra, right? Back towards the right. 
and towards the left. Inhale, arms up. Let's draw a circle. Go clockwise around the circle and inhale, take it back up and reverse it. Really feel that lengthening through your spine in every direction. Let's bring the palms in front of the heart. Exhale, lower your arms down, feel your shoulder blades on your back. Now keep your palms forward, take your arms up, 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 up. I just want you to feel that and then lower it down. Yup, you got this. Now turn your palms so they're facing back in the back of your hand or top of your hand is forward. Now take it up. Feel how that's kind of weird, but then the back of the hands come together and then bring them down and start to circle around your wrists. You can think of this like a candle flame. You're just rolling around on your hands and wrists and fingers and come back to neutral. Beautiful. Round your spine for fat. Inhale, lift up into your cow pose. Lift the heart. Sitting bones are back. Exhale, rounding. Notice how you're on the back of your sitting bones when we're doing cat pose. Inhale, we're on the front of the sitting bones in cow pose. Come back to neutral, right in the middle, right in the middle. Um, take a block, if you've got one or a ball or something, we're just gonna kind of go like this, side to side, and have your gaze go that way. So we're just kind of playing with side to side. Yeah, you could do it even without a block. Yes. But if you have something to press into, that would be nice. So go back down from hand to hand and then start to go back up. Make sure you're breathing as you take it up. Go back down and then bring it in front of you. Bend your elbows, press your palms into the block. Elbows are out to the side. Then take a twist towards your right. Breathe in. Breathe out, inhale to center, twist towards your left, come back to center, extend the block out, push your palms into the block, push your palms into the block, notice what happens to your shoulder blades, breathe in, breathe out, inhale, lift the block skyward, that's it. Lift it skyward. Your elbows can be bent or straight. Let's bend them and straighten them. Bring the palms back down. Find your twist. And your twist. Come back to center. Place the block in between your thighs. Now, lean back. Hug your block. Come back to center, lean forward, hug your block. Come back to center. Inhale, we're not squeezing it in. We're, but on the exhale, hug your inner thighs into the block. Inhale, release that squeeze. Exhale, hug the block. Inhale, release. Exhale, hug the block, feel your pelvic floor tone and your belly, lower belly, lower belly. Inhale, release. One more time. Take an inhale. Exhale. Tone. Tone, tone, tone. All right. Let's rock forward and back and maybe lift off. I know we did this on Wednesday. The squats are such a great thing to do to keep our thighs strong. If you want a chair or a table or a counter in front of you, take it. And we might lift off, we might not, and then we'll exhale and we'll slowly lower down. So we're not staying up real long yet. You can always stay as long as it feels okay for you. Hug your block, hug your block when you're up. Beautiful, 
feel the weight. It's in the back of your feet towards your heels. Exhale, slowly lower down. Inhale, swing the arms forward. Feel the weight. Take your sitting bones back, back, back. Hug your block. Hug your block like you love it. There you go. Maybe take your left arm back behind you. Maybe gaze over the shoulder. These are all maybes because you have to feel safe. You are creating your safe container. Let's switch it up. Left arm is forward. Right arm is back. Maybe you gaze over the right shoulder. Breathe in. Breathe out. Take both arms forward. Forward, exhale, have a seat. Yes, you guys are awesome. Let's release the block. We'll let that rest right now. And inhale, take your right heel up. Exhale, lower it down, other heel up. Exhale, lower it down, go back to the right and to the left. Okay. We're going to inhale and lift the right knee. Give it a hug in. Give it a hug in. Sit tall. So we're not back and we're not forward. We're up. So kneecap is facing up and top of the head is facing up. Then maybe you take your hands underneath the thigh, but you could use a tie here and push the heel away from you towards the screen. And then bring it back in. The idea is to stay upright. So if for some reason as you push away and you lean back like that, come back up and don't straighten the legs so much. Because the what we want to do ideally is stay upright. So we're staying upright, pushing the heel away to your range of motion. You can also keep the leg down or up as you do this. You might use a strap. You don't have to use a strap. It, it could be here, like this. This is a variation, and this is a variation. And then we're going to exhale and lower that down. And other side. Left knee lifts. Hug it on in. Notice when you hug your thigh towards you, you can sit even taller. We are taller. Breathe in and breathe out. And breath is in and breath is out. Interlace your fingers behind your thigh. Push the hot thigh, the foot away from you. If you'd like, you can use the strap and set instead. Pull the knee in and press it away. Breathe in and breathe out. One more and press it away. All right, bring both feet back to neutral. Extending your right leg, hands at your hips. Lean forward on your sitting bones, hug your elbows towards each other. Flexing your right foot, push the heel down, push it down and pull it towards you. You'll probably feel your belly engage. Then we're going to push down through the left foot and the right heel and rise up. Hands to the chair. Maybe lift the leg. Bend the knee. Lace it down. Other side. Extending the left foot. Push the heel down. Pull the tiptoes towards you. Keep As you push the heel down, you're going to pull your toes towards you and your heel isometrically towards you is another way of saying this because that's giving us a lot of power pushing down and pulling towards you activates the muscles on the legs lift tall lean forward sitting bones are moving back let them move back you'll feel your lower back curve engage hug your elbows towards each other without squeezing too much you start to feel like you're getting too tight around here, it's a squeezing too much. Push down through the right foot, hands to the chair, inhale, lift the left leg up, rise tall through your crown, and exhale, bring that foot down and in. Let's take both legs forward, 
Circle the ankles around. Juice up your joints. We want to get to as many joints as we can to juice them and oil them up. It's been very cold around here, although today's warmer. So our joints get kind of stiff. So circle around and then reverse it. And then bring it on in. Now we're going to do something new today. You're going to take this block and you're going to bring your elbow on top of the block. And you're going to push your elbow down into the block and your thigh up into the block. Then you might lift your opposite arm as you inhale. So you're pushing down into the, into the block and your thigh is pushing up into the block. Your arm is up and then exhale and lower it down. So when you're doing this, you're gonna feel your belly engage. You're building strength here, pushing elbow into block, thigh into the bottom of the block, pushing up into the block. So pressure down, pressure up. Inhaling, left arm lifts. Exhale, lowering arm. Inhale, it lifts. You could use a book, by the way, it has to be something firm that you're pushing this elbow into. Release that out. Maybe circle the shoulders around and about. This is something new. We haven't done this before. I got keyed into it because we had a pelvic floor workshop and the teacher taught this. And I thought, oh, wow, I've done that on the ground, but haven't done it in the chair. Now let's place the left elbow on the block and push the left thigh up into the block. So press down, push up, press down, push up. Elbow presses down, thigh presses up. Breathe in, breathe out. Now, inhaling arm lifts. You're still keeping the pressure down through the left side, exhaling, release. Inhaling arm lifts. Yes, exhale, release it down. Let's shake it out, shake it out. We're gonna go back to the other side and maybe lift the opposite leg while we do this. Right elbow into block, thigh pushing up into block. Now, maybe you lift, you take your leg out, lift it up, exhale, lower the leg down. Inhale, lift up, exhale, take it down. You could also take the arm out to the side and lower it down. Inhale, arm and leg lift, exhale, lower it down. Bring that foot back in, let's do the other side. Elbow pressing in, it's really like the upper arm and the elbow are pressing in. And then thigh is pushing up. So. To feel that, you might push down through your foot in order to feel that upper energy. So this is an isometric. Let's extend the right leg. Inhale, leg and arm lift. Exhale, lower. Inhale, they lift. Doesn't matter how high, by the way. Exhale, lower. It's your range of motion, nobody else's. Inhale, leg lifts. Exhale, lower. Let's take the arm out to the side. Exhale, we lower. Inhale, lifting. Exhale, lowering. One more. Lift it up. Exhale, lower it down. Awesome. Bring the foot back in. Now, put the block on the right thigh. Take your left elbow, cross it over. Now we're doing a twist when we do this. And then you can extend your left leg. So we've got the left elbow on top of the block that's on the right thigh. Press down, lift the leg, exhale and lower. Maybe you take the arm out to the side. So we've got left leg, right arm. They're lifting and lowering and elbow is into thigh. So we're crossing over. Give that a break. 
Let's do the other side. This is hard work, by the way, but this is working your core. Um, bring that elbow across. So right elbow across to the left thigh and block. And then extend the right leg. And inhale, lift the leg. And exhale, lower it. Push down into the block. And then release. Push it down and release. Maybe you do arm and leg. You could choose. Maybe you're doing arm and not leg. So you could have arm lifts, leg stays down, but we're still pushing into the block. That is the strengthening. We push down, we lift. We push down, we lift. Give it a break. Let that go. Let's make sure we didn't get any tightness in the neck or the shoulders. So circle your nose around. Make a circle with the tip of your nose, clockwise, and then reverse it. Breathe in and breathe out and come back to center. There we have it. Let's take our legs outwards into our horsey goddess pose. Now push down through your feet. Isometrically, you're pulling your heels towards each other. We'll take the hands in as we do this. Kind of a slow movement. Pull the hands towards each other as you push down through your heels and towards each other. Then open it up. Exhale, pull the heels in towards each other. When you do that, my guess is you're feeling belly engage and open it. I always get people, oh, let's work on core. Well, we can work on core with almost every pose, except resting pose. Push down, pull it in, open it up. One more time, push down, pull the heels in. Let's lift our arms into that Mudra, Charlie's Angels. Take a side bend towards your right. So arms are moving towards over ears. Pull your ribs back. Breathe in, breathe out. You can always bend your elbows and lengthen them and play with that. Bending and lengthening. You'll get a nice stretch. Lift on up. Relax shoulders, exhaling towards the left, bend elbows in towards you, extend them away. Pull in, push away. Pull it in, push it away. Press down through your feet when you're ready, but really feel the stretch and rise on up. Hands at the heart. Let's bring these legs back in, back in. And take a breath in and a breath out. Drop your right ear towards your right shoulder. Just let it go. Maybe you drop the left arm and you'll feel the weight. Then gaze down. So. When you're gazing down, it's like down towards the mat, down towards the earth. You'll feel some stretchies behind here. And then bring the chin forward and lift the head. Exhale, dropping the left ear down towards the left shoulder. Relax your shoulders. Maybe let the left arm just dangle. It dangles and it gets a little heavy. Breathe in, breathe out. Now gaze down towards the mat and the earth. I can feel that pull right around here. Just notice where you feel it. And then take your chin towards center and lift your head up. And notice how you feel now. Let's take both arms forward, turn the palms upright, touch the top of your shoulders and give yourself a little massage. So you're just pushing your or pressing the tips of your fingertips into your traps. 
Notice these muscles. They can be very tender. They can be very tender. Give it a little massage. Make little circular motions with your finger pads because you deserve it. You deserve it. Then you're going to lift your elbows and stack one hand on top of the other and gently press your palms into your head, but your head is pressing into your palms. You're never pushing your head forward. It's leaning back into your palms. And then I'm just showing you this way. You can stay seated. As you push the skin in, pull it up. So you get a little traction through your neck. Press in, pull it up. Breathe in, breathe out and release, let that go. Walk your buttocks forward on the chair. Take your hands back. So they're either gonna go towards the back corners of the chair or maybe onto the sidebars of the chair. Roll your shoulders up and back. Lift your heart for a little back bend. Maybe you take your hands off and the palms are facing towards each other. Heart is lifting, back of the neck is long, and then release, let that go. It's a nice back bend. If you feel like the head needs to drop back, you can use a hand behind your head. Let's try that version. So if you feel like the neck is straining or the head is dropping back, keep one hand behind there for support. And then you can have one hand down. Push the hand into the back of the head, but push the head into the back of the hand. Lift your heart. Lift your heart. Your one hand is back towards the back of the seat of the chair for your back bend. And then rise back up. Come back to center. We could do the other side. If you want, you could do the other side twice. If one side you feel like you can't get your hand back there, then, then do that. So gently pressing head into hand and then hand into head. Then lifting the skin of the, the skull, really, the occiput, occipital muscles back there. Lift your heart, maybe take the right hand back behind you. Shoulder blades are coming towards each other. Head is supported. Release, come back upright, both hands to the back of the chair. Circle the shoulders up and back. Lean slightly forward, tailbone is back. Breathe in, breathe out, inhale, rise up. Notice how your body is feeling now. Let's do number four pose to make sure our hips are starting to open up. So you might put We've got all those variations. You can have your heel against the ankle. That's one variation. You can have your foot on the block and that's another variation. You might have a few blocks. So each time we lift it, it's a little bit more intense of a hip opener. So if your hips are tight, you're gonna mine that and it's gonna be all the way down on the earth. Yeah, it just depends how tight are they. Or maybe the ankle comes onto the thigh. And then maybe you interlace a few fingers in between your toes, because that's really good for your feet. And you might even give them a little massage and circle around a bit. And that's wonderful for your toes and your feet. And then we're gonna lift tall. We're gonna lean forward, lean forward, sitting bones move back until you feel a stretch around that right thigh, back of the thigh, inner thigh. Breathe in, breathe out, back of the neck is long. Gazing forward and down is helpful to keep the spine long. We're gonna push down through the foundation leg, which is the left, rise back up. Take your fingers out, and maybe give your the bottom of your feet Little taps, just kind of give them little taps. Wake up that foot, wake it up. And it's very good to wake it up. Then make a fist. So thumb on the inside, wrap the fingers around. You're gonna use your knuckles to 
press into the foot and then pull the knuckles back. So you're making lines with your knuckles in your feet, one at a time, of course. And then let's release and do the other side. So find the version that's right for you on the left side. And this might be it, might be a little bit lower without the blocks or it might be ankle on thigh. So whichever is best for you. Let's lift tall once again, we're always lifting tall. Take an inhale, on the exhale, start to hinge from the hip, lean forward, elbows towards each other, gaze forward and down. So if I gaze forward and up, my neck is kinking. If I gaze forward and down, my head is dropping and the neck is getting um, too far stretched downward like that. It's, it's straightening too much. So that's why we try to keep the spine long as we come forward. Take a breath in and, and out. I guess I should have mentioned you might not be able to get your fingers and your toes if your foot is down. If your foot is up, and you're interlacing your fingers as you do that forward fold. Breathe in and breathe out, maybe circle around. Really waking up the feet is so important for really the whole body, for your balance, for your little receptors down there. There's a lot of information that comes in through your feet. And then even if your foot is down there, you might be able to just tap it, tap it, give it a little love tap, little love tap. And then using your right hand, thumb on the inside, wrap it around. If you can't reach your foot, that's fine. Let's just circle the wrist around and about. Juice up our joints. We have to get to all of them, all of them. Oof. Let that go. And we'll work ourselves down towards the mat. I'm gonna put these blocks to the side, keep the strap and bring a blanket with you. Find your way safely down. You know, I like chair against wall because I know it's safe that chair is not moving and protect your knees with a blanket as you find your way down. As always, be safe, know that you can get back up again because that's really critical. Or that you have somebody nearby that could help out. Most important, move this chair out of the way. Hopefully you don't see it. No, you don't see it. Okay, we're gonna come down onto our hands and knees and Bring your palms down to the earth, or if your wrists are sore, and maybe forearms down, or hands on blocks, because they're just a little bit softer. A lot of people find this a little bit more tolerable for their wrists. So if you wanna do what's right for you, if you have like arthritis in your wrists, then you might wanna come down into your forearms. Then let's do a few cat cows, round the spine, shin to chest, tailbone down, and then inhale, heart lifts, head lifts, sitting bones lift. So we've got the spine curling upward like the cat, and then we've got the spine curling downward like the cow. And then come back to center. We're gonna play with thread the needle. And I'm gonna show it both ways. I'll turn forward too so you can see it. You're gonna move, you can move your left hand to center, whether you're on the blocks or not. And then you're gonna lift your right arm out to the side and up towards the sky. And then exhale and lower the hand down. Inhale, it rises up. So the bottom shoulder is externally rotating. You can turn the hand out a bit. The fingers are going um, towards the right and the left arm is lifting. Or you might be doing opposite and that's fine. And then let's circle the hand down and through behind the arm 
And then inhale, lift it up. One more time, curl it down and lift it up, lift it up. And then let's place the hand down and do the other side. I'm going to show it forward now just so you can see the difference. Now, some of you might land into thread the needle and that's fine. But if you have neck issues, I don't recommend it because I can't see you if you're in alignment. I'll show you what I mean. This is coming down into thread the needle once you do a few of those arm lifts. But if you know you have neck issues, I don't suggest it because I don't want you to take weight into your neck and your head. So um, that's why I'm not teaching it with that. But some of you might know, you might be familiar with thread of the needle. Um, so if you are and you know it's okay for you, go ahead and do it. Here's the front view. We're doing the opposite arm. Lifting, curling that arm up. Did you guys see that beautiful crescent moon last night? It was pretty wow factor. Inhale, arm lifts up. Exhaling, arm is downward. Now, if you're familiar with the full, full version of the pose, coming down and to thread the needle, you are free to do that. If not, maybe just circle up and down a few times. Then we'll come back to our table and let's find a child pose. So for child pose, your knees are gonna be somewhat apart. And again, you might use the blanket for your knees and you can have your knees a little bit apart or a little further, but that's gonna be up to your hips. Now you can do this pose when you're seated in two chairs. Now we're gonna take our hips back and our arms arms are going to move forward. If you have sore shoulders, bend your elbows. Maybe rest your forehead on your forearms that are stacked. If you don't, you can lengthen your arms forward and you can rest your head on a block or forehead down and take about three, four breaths. Breathe in, feel the expansion in the belly. Exhale, breathe out through your nose. Breathe in and breathe out. In breath and out breath. Now we're gonna switch this up to a crescent shaped because that crescent was so gorgeous last night. So you're gonna walk your hands to one side. And again, your elbows can be bent. The opposite hip is pulling back to the opposite way. So this is my left hip, it's pulling back, but my body is curving around towards the right. Breathing in, breathing out, getting a really nice side bend. Inhale, hands forward and towards the other way, maybe stacking the hands pulling the right hip back. Long, long lengthening on the right side of the body. And that, that right, that, that, the opposite hip. This is my right hip. Breathe in and breathe out. That hip is pulling back and you might feel like it goes to the side a little bit. And come back to center and let's lift up. We're going to roll onto our sides for a little bit of core building. Our obliques, our obliques. I'm going to give you a few different versions. So you're going to want to bend your knees. Most of you are going to want to bend your knees. You might have a block in front of you. So you can start by being down on your side, bending your elbow and relaxing your head. You want to try to make sure your body's in somewhat of a straight line. So crown to head to tailbone. Then from here, your fingertips can be on a block or they can be down on the mat. And then we're going to lift our lower ribs up. Now, this is going to be a hard one for you to see. 
But imagine I could get my hand under my ribs because the ribs are lifting up. We're going to do about 10 repetitions of that. So as you exhale, you're lifting the ribs and inhale, you're lowering down. Exhale, we lift. Inhale, we roll down. What's moving are the ribs and the belly. Nothing else is moving. We lift up. We lower down. A few more. Exhale on the upward movement. Inhale on the downward movement. Now, for some of you, you might come up onto your elbow. If you come onto your elbow, then you want to keep this shoulder back. It's still externally rotating. What's helpful is to turn the palm upright, and then this whole arm is opening up towards the back. Some of you might lift your ribs from here, so it looks like that. We're lifting the ribs up. Some of you might push down and lift up, but please make sure if you have any, anything going on in your shoulder, then I don't recommend lifting all the way up. You always want to keep this externally rotated. You don't want the shoulder coming forward. We want it coming back. Do a few more lifts, however you choose to do it. If this is not in your repertoire today, then come back down and do a few more repetitions of this because these are awesome and they are a lot of work. And then from here, relax down and extend the top leg. We're going to lift it and lower it, bring the knee in towards us, extend it away. Inhale, lift it up and point your foot. Exhale, flex your foot, lower it down. Bring the knee in, extend it away. Lift the leg, point the toes. Exhale, flex the toes, bring it down. Now from here, you're going to make a circle with your foot. So you're circling it around and about. Your whole leg is moving in the circle. And you might start to feel this in your hip. Let's reverse it. Reverse the circle. You will start to feel something going on. If it's too much, just stop. Take a break. One more time. Circle it the other way. Little repetitions. If it's really burning, if you make the circle bigger, it might release a little bit. So you get to decide how big your circle is. Reverse it. And then bring your knees in. Press your hands down to rise up so we can do the other side. So we're going to bring those knees around. Find yourself on your other side. And then make a little cushion with your arm. You could put a blanket under there, but we still want the ear level with the shoulder. We don't want that because that's going to kink your neck. Lower. I'm going to lower that down. And now we're going to lift the bottom ribs up and lower down. So I sh you should be able to get your hand underneath there. There's enough space. In between the mat and your ribs, you could get your hand under there and release. Exhale up. Inhale down. Exhale up. Notice the belly tones. Inhale down. Exhale lifting. Inhale lowering. Exhale lift up. Inhale lower down. Exhale we lift up. Inhale lower down. One more. Exhale lift up. Inhale lower down. Now, you can stay there and do those or come up onto your forearm. Same thing. We don't want shoulder coming forward. It's got to come back. The elbow is about under your shoulder, but slightly forward. You can kind of see here's the shoulder, here's the elbow. So there's a little bit of space. It's going more to the side. Then we're going to lift our bottom ribs up on the exhale. Exhale, they lift. Inhale, they lower. Exhale, lifting, inhale, lowering. So these are little pulses, breathing in and out, but it's important as you lift, that's the exhale. As you lower, that's the inhale, because you're building your core 
So it's the more difficult movement. That's the exhale when we're building core. Breathe in and breathe out. And we're gonna come down and make a cushion again. We're gonna extend the top leg. Your hand can be in front of here because there's a little bit of balance going on. A little bit of balance going on. Let's bring the knee in towards us, extend it away, lift the leg up, lower it down. Pull the knee in towards you, extend it, lift it. And you can play with the pointing and the flexing. Pointing, flexing, pointing, flexing. Breathe in, breathe out, lifting and lowering. Let's go to those circles. So you're making a circle with your, your leg, your toes, your foot. And you can play with teeny circles or bigger and bigger circles. Feel this movement. It's a little bit of a balance trick because you're staying on your side. And then reverse your circles. You might find that one side is easier than the other because it is. Because one leg may be a little bit more strong and that's that's almost always the case. It's almost always the case. We have a dominant leg and arm. Maybe reverse it one more time. And reverse it. You'll start to feel a little burn back there. You're working your muscles. And then bend your knees, push down, rise up. Notice how your body is feeling now. Doing a little bit of seated before we go down onto our backs. Placing a blanket underneath our hips or a pillow or block, something because Almost everybody needs to be up on a blanket pillow or two. Let's start in our butterfly. So feet together. Feel your feet towards each other. Lift tall. And we're going to lengthen our spine and maybe go a little bit forward. So you're creepy crawling your fingers forward. When you start to feel a little opening there, stop. Breathe in. Breathe out, breathing in and breathing out. Breath is in and breath is out. Come on, back up, back up. Let's extend the left leg out to the side, keeping the right knee in. And yes, you're gonna feel this. So if it's too much, walk your foot in a bit or Move your foot in a bit, it's okay. Then your leg is in, but you're still getting a stretch. You wanna to get to the place where you're gonna feel something, but not too much. Stretching shouldn't really hurt. You're gonna feel a little bit of a, a pull or a tug, but it should be, your breath should be consistent and flowing, and it shouldn't be like, ouch, 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 pushing through it. You'd never wanna do that. Then you'll walk your hands forward until you feel that stretch, same thing. Only go as fo much forward is as accessible for you without experiencing pain. Breathe in, breathe out. You can play with pointing and flexing your foot. That's kind of fun because you'll feel it in different places. So our spine is long, our sitting bones are moving back. Breathe in and breathe out. Then walk your fingers towards you. Come upright, bending the left knee in, extending the right out. Same thing. Find the place where you feel a stretch. It's going to be on the inside of the thigh, most likely. Too much, bring that leg in. Not enough, bring the leg out. So we, once again, you... You can use your fingertips, push down, or your hands into your thighs, push down, rise up. Then start to walk the fingers forward till you feel a stretch and then pause. Breathe in 
Breathe out, maybe pointing and flexing the foot because it changes the stretch up. It's a little bit of a distraction too. So we're pointing and flexing, perhaps not required, just an option. Sitting bones are back. Breathe in, breathe out. Breathing in and breathing out. Soft breath in, soft breath out. Breathe in, breathe out. Let's come back up, bring our feet together, shake them out, let it go. And we're gonna come down onto our back. You might have a blanket nearby and maybe a, a strap. And then we're gonna come down onto our backs. And if your head is tilting back like that, then you do need a blanket, but you want it on the tip of the back of the head, not necessarily under the whole head. You want to end up where the head or the forehead is parallel with the chin. So we're not doing that. That's crunching the neck back. And this is not, it's too long. So right about in between is where we want it. Then from here, let's do a few pelvic tilts. So tilting the pelvis forward and back. So this is pelvis forwards. Uh, little pointy parts are pulling up. They're angling up to the ceiling. This is pelvis back. The lower back is pressing gently into the earth. Forward and back, and then find your center. So forward, back, find the center in between forward and back. Then from here, lay with lifting the right knee and then the left, the left knee up. So the knees are over your hips. Your hands can be down by your side or maybe in a cactus. We're going to play with dipping our toes down. So one foot dips down, comes back up. You want to be pressing your ribs down. If you get lower back pain, you're feeling some pain right here, stop please. That means you shouldn't be lowering the leg all the way down, so you wanna keep it up. And we can alternate one lowering down and then the other. We're keeping our ribs down. So again, another piece of core work here, dipping our toes down, lifting them back up to that right angle, dipping toes down on the other side lifting back up. Let's do it one more time each side and we'll give it a break. And then let's place our feet down. Move the blanket away and put your hands behind your head. Now caution again, we're not pushing the head up. We're pulling the belly in, the head may lift. So you're gonna take an inhale. On the exhale, maybe lift up, but Belly's pulling in and head is relaxing into hands. We're not pushing head up to the sky. And then inhale, lower down. On the exhaling, pulling the belly in, maybe the head and the shoulders lift a little bit, but the nose is pointing up to the sky. And then inhale, lower down. One more time, pull belly in, press the ribs down into the mat, maybe the head lifts and then lower down. Pull the right knee in towards you, give it a big hug, and extend your left heel. Push the left heel down into the mat and isometrically pull it towards you as you press the right knee in to your, to your, the right ribs. And then let's switch it up, bring both knees in. Pull the left kneecap in towards you. Extend the right leg long. Push the heel down. Pull the toes towards you. Keep pushing that heel down and pull toes towards you. You're going to feel your core again engaging. Breathe in and breathe out. And breath is in and breath is out. Now bring both 
legs in towards you. Roll around on your spine. Roll around on your spine. And then take it from there to happy baby. So we're still rocking on the spine, but the knees are open a little bit more and your feet are pressing up towards the sky. And then you're gonna release your feet down. Now we're gonna do a crescent shape with our, our body. So we're gonna extend the legs, push the heels down, push the ribs down. Then we're gonna walk our body towards the right, keeping our legs together. Maybe arms come up overhead for a lying down side bend. You can keep your arms down by your side or you can lift them up, elbows can be bent. You're walking your body towards the right. This is a crescent moon. Now, if you want, you can walk your feet towards the right and now you're in more of a curvy, a uh, uh, curve with both sides coming up on the sides a little bit. And then come out of it, walk your feet towards the left and your upper body towards the left. And you are in a crescent on the opposite side. Now you could just do your upper body or your lower body. You do not have to do both, you never do. Breathe in, feel the back of the body as it expands towards the mat. Breathe out, let go. And inhale back to center. Let's find our spinal, spinal twist. Knees in. Let them rock to the side. Either side. Knees are stacking. And then open up into a cactus. So elbows are bent. And then you may need to put a block or something underneath. If your knees are going to the right, the left shoulder is going to be lifted a bit. You might put a rolled blanket or pillow under there. It's a really nice opening across the pectoral region. The head may or may not turn the opposite way of the knees. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathing in. And breathing out. Inhale, knees back to center. Walk your hips towards the opposite way and let your knees fall down towards the left. And then you can kind of check out. Sometimes I get a little crooked. So check out that your head is in line with the side of your body and hips. Arms are in cactus or T. And notice maybe one side felt tighter than the other. Maybe you're turning the head the opposite way of the knees. Rest in your twist for a few breaths. And then find your way to the final resting pose. So you might put your feet up or your legs up on a bolster. You might put your legs up on a chair, but it's nice to Put them on something so that your lower back can release. And you want to make yourself comfortable. Maybe you put a little something under your head. Maybe you cover your whole body with a blanket, depending upon your body temperature. Hands can be on your belly to feel your breath. Or arms can be down by your side. And this is the time to just be We've been moving quite a bit. So it might take a little time for the body to say, oh yes, I'm in a resting pose. The breath is no longer consciously controlled. We return to that subconscious mode because we're gonna breathe no matter what. Feel the nice soft breath. Relaxing your legs. 
your hips. Your spine. Your head. In your arms. Breathing in. And breathing out. Relaxing all parts of the body. Relaxing the tongue. Lips gently touching. In on the forehead, in the middle eye, and in between the eyebrows is relaxed. Oh. All bodies relaxed. So you can stay in your relaxed pose as long as you wish. I'll roll over to the side to close the clasp, but you can stay in your resting pose. I highly encourage it. One of the most important poses in our practice because we forget in our culture that it's needed in between all the doing, we get to just be. Let the body assimilate the practice. Let's bring our palms together in front of our heart, bowing in with hands to chest. Thanking our bodies, thanking our minds and our spirits, thanking the gifts of this practice, for us all coming together in support of the Michigan Parkinson Foundation. Namaste, everyone. Have a wonderful weekend.